the distance and segment addition postulate is pretty much like a crowd pleaser because everybody likes doing these problems because it's totally intuitive. Obviously, if AC is one huge segment, you can tell just by looking at it that if I add AB and BC, right, of course, A plus AB segment plus BC equals AC. So that's totally easy, right? And so these are fun and like it does get a little weird. So I'll give you a couple trick questions, but in general, Kids like these because they make sense. Obviously, look, if I said, what's AB? Well, let's say I said AB is 10, for example. And then I said, okay, BC is 12. And remember, before we even start, these are not drawn to scale. I could call AB 50 and BC 3, and you have to just believe me because they're not to scale. But in this case, look, AB 10. So we can basically write a little 10 in here, right? And then BC is 12, so put a little 12 in here. What is, they might ask, what is AC? And obviously you would say, well, 10 plus 12 is 22, so that's easy. If AB is 10, BC is 12, then AC, the whole thing, is obviously 22, right? And okay, so here's a slightly more difficult one, but still pretty straightforward. What if they said, for example, AB is equal to, you know, I don't know, 15, and then they said AC is equal to 32, and then they ask what BC is? right? That's a little weird. So a little trick I invented back in the day, you guys can borrow it. I'm giving you free range is I write the short segments underneath and the long segment on top. If they give it to me, AB is 15. So I'll just write that down here. There's 15, right? And then I'm ready to write in BC, but they actually don't give me BC. So if you want, you could actually call it X. You don't have to, you just say, I don't know what BC is. And then AC, the whole thing they give me, I'm going to write it on top. Pretty cool trick. And, you know, if you really want to visually represent it, you could even kind of do that if you wanted to go over the top. So now, obviously, you to find BC, you are not going to add 15 and 32. You can tell visually it's the difference, right? It's what's left. 15 plus I don't know is 32. So you have 15 plus who knows equals 32 minus 15 minus 15. You should get X equals 17. So don't just walk away from this video and say, Ryan told me that I just add the two segments to solve any problem. Sometimes it'll be a subtraction problem, right? So here's some problems that kind of involve variables. You know, uh, what if they said AB equals, and rather than a number, what if they called it 3X, right? And then they said, okay, and then BC is going to be 2X. So obviously we could put those in. 3x and then 2x. There's no way to solve for that. They have to give me AC in pretty much in every case they do. So then they'd say, well, AC is 25. So you write that up here per my trick. All right. Okay. So that's like that. So now you know that these two suckers add to this long guy. So all you do is write out your little algebraic equation. So doing so, I'd get 3x plus this guy, 2x equals 25. Looks to me like 5x equals 25. Divide by 5, divide by 5, so you would get x equals 5, right? And so that one was pretty straightforward. Okay, now I'm going to throw you a little knuckleball because these are getting too easy. You're just thinking, okay, obviously I add this piece to this piece to get this piece. No brainer. Sometimes subtract, sometimes add. Here's the one that everyone gets wrong. And by the way, in this question, I actually didn't ask you what to solve for. In this question, you were solving for, the question had to be solved for x, right? And I did. I solved for x and everybody's happy. And that's what I'm going to try to trick you on. Don't forget to read the question. If they said solve for x, that's what we did. We added this plus this is 25. We did a bunch of math. It was cool. It came out to x is 5. Sometimes they don't ask to solve for x. So let me show you before I like ruin the ending, I'll set up a problem for you. Okay. The following is a typical question. They'll say something um, like this. Again, let's say AB equals 3X, you know, um, BC equals X, and then AC equals, you know, I don't know, um, 24. But then when you read on the question, it doesn't say solve for X. It says, what is BC, right? So that's a totally different question. You still have to solve for X first. Just don't forget to plug it back in. Uh, and that's what everybody messes up. And actually, it's funny because I set up this problem with BC equaling X. Um, fine, let's scratch that out. What if they said, what is, all right, what is AB? You know, they could ask either. I didn't want to do BC because it totally equals X and I just ruined the ending. So let's set this up. So we said AB is 3X. So I'm actually going to write it in there. 
3x, and it said BC is x, and then on top, what is the total AC, the whole length? That's 24. This kind of looks cool to do that. That's 24, right? So this is a pretty simple math. It looks to me like 3x plus x equals 24, right? And then you have 4x equals 24 divided by 4 divided by 4. You get x equals 6. Now what every kid does, this is what every kid does, and they totally get the problem wrong, is they stop here. They go, okay, I did the math. Everybody's happy. This is my answer. X equals 6, and they move on to the next question. But remember, that's not what the question asked. And by the way, I'm judging kids. I totally make this mistake every time. I never read the question, and I just think I'm done. They didn't ask what X is. In this question, they asked, what is AB? So then don't forget, you have to plug that back into this here. AB is not X or 6. AB is 3X. So it would be 3 times 6. So AB would be equal to 18. Just be careful. When you see those questions, they're going to try to trick you. If they ask for X, that's cool. You solve for it. They might ask for AB, which would be 3 times 6. Or they could have said, what is BC? And you would have said, well, BC is X. So this is also just flat out 6. And that's how you do these. I'm going to do one more. They're pretty straightforward, so I think you're getting the hang of them. There's only one more that's kind of weird, and we'll do that. Uh, and then you can jump out of here and do as many practice problems as you can get your hands on. So what if they just told you that B is the midpoint, midpoint of AC? Right? That, that has information in it. And then they said, okay, well, AC is equal to 34. So that I can just write in right now. AC is 34, I'll put it up here, right? But what is this whole thing about? B is the midpoint of AC, like how would I find that? And then the question is, right, find, in this case, maybe they'll say find BC. So looking at this, I don't know how to do it. I do know if B is the midpoint that this sucker is congruent to this sucker, they're the same length, and I don't know what those lengths are. In any case where there's something you don't know, you can just write, I have no idea, right, X. But I do know they're the same, so this has to be x as well. And so now I can go back to my little addition postulate. I'm just going to add these, right? So then I'll just simply add x plus x, which would give me 2x. And I know that those equal 34, so basically I'm done. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 17, which means both of these are 17, right? So I can replace my x's. So let's just put 17 in here and 17 in here. Now I forgot the question. I don't even care what the question is. I did my math. I know everything I need to know. Now I look down here. What was my question in the first place? Find BC. I'm totally done. BC is 17. They could have said find AB and I could have done that too, right? AB was 17 as well. Uh, so it's pretty easy once you get all your pieces. Just don't forget at the very end, look and make sure, verify what was the question. Was it find X? Was it find well, one of the lengths in particular? And then you're done. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Good luck.